In the previous video, I was promising that we could analyze um, LFSR's nice theories mathematics. So let's jump right in. This is probably going to be the most scary lecture for a while. Well, okay, until the next lecture, no, uh, bad joke. So in this lecture, we're going to use several terminologies from linear algebra. So if you haven't seen linear algebra yet, you do want to learn about matrices and characteristic polynomials before jumping into this one. So I will assume that you have seen these terms and use them very briefly. So what I want to use here is to represent my state as a vector. So my state is always a register of length n. Um, here is again a stereotypical example. Remember that if you have a wire, that means that the coefficient is 1. If you don't have a wire going up, the coefficient is 0. So here the coefficient of s0 is 1 as always. In this case of s1, so that c1 is also 1, c2 is 0, then there's a whole bunch more. The cn minus 2 is 0, and cn minus 1 is 1. And I want to determine how to write the next state, the s1, in terms of the previous state. Well, I know how to do this. I'm taking the state and shifting over 1 to the left, and I'm getting in the new coefficient, the sn, which is the sum of the previous one with the appropriate coefficient. So sn is the sum over the ci si, and then of course in the next iteration I have sn plus 1, and then it's the si plus 1, and so it to be. So the coefficients are always ci, and the s gonna get larger coefficients, uh, larger indices. And I want to write this um, this update as a matrix multiplication. So I would like to have my S1, this long vector here, be written as a product of the previous vector times a big matrix. Well, if I have a, ma a vector of length n, then this has to be an n by n matrix if I want to get a vector of length n out again. So much for that. And then I want that my vector sh gets shifted. So the only thing that happens with S0 is it gets discarded. Well, it also gets multiplied by C0. So the way that matrix multiplication works is we're going the first row here and then times every column. So we're seeing here this row times this column, this row times this column, and so on. The only thing which gets multiplied by S0, because there's all zeros here, is the C0. And then we're getting in the next one. Uh -huh, the first entry is going to be S1, that matches. S2 gets matched here. So what we have in the blue part here is just an n minus 1 times n minus 1 identity matrix. And the thing it does is it shifts the vector 1 over to the left. And then the last coefficient, this Sn, well, that one is the sum over the coefficients times the Si. And so let's look at the last entry. So we have S0 times C0, S1 times C1, till Sn minus 1 times Cn minus 1. And that is the definition of Sn. So we have now written our state update by a matrix multiplication. And then the next time, this was independent of actually having S0 and S1 here. I could have had Sj and Sj plus 1. So it's always the update means you multiply by C. And the way that C is built, remember the blue part here is an identity matrix. And then on the right there is a column vector which has the coefficients from the LFSR. So the coefficients from the LFSR starting at C0 till cn minus 1. So this is length n, all the coefficients, so all the things that are here. So a wire means 1, 1, 0, something, 0, 1. Okay, so examples here back to our length 3 LFSRs. So this is the one where we have the nice length 7 period. And well, in general, it's an n by n matrix. So here, this is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. Then we have, flipping back again, we have this identity matrix, which is one smaller. So for a 3 by 3, this is going to be a 2 by 2 identity matrix. Just shift it below, there's a row of zeros. 
And then on the right, we're going to have the coefficient vector. Okay, we can do this. So here we have a two by two identity matrix. And then the coefficients here are one, zero, one. So one, zero, one. Top is the first position, bottom is the last position. It's another example. The second one we've been looking at. So this was the LFSR, which had these periods four, two, one, one, where all the coefficients are one. So we have C0 is one, C1 is one, and C2 is one. And so that means that the uh, last column of C is going to be the all one vector and the rest, well, there's going to be zeros and below that an identity matrix two by two. So this is what these matrices look like. And I've already saying, well, I want to use these to update the state and I'm promising you some nice properties of it. So what can we see from it? So what can we learn from the state update matrix? This is how we develop it as the first the state S1 being state at zero times C. But also in general, if I now go for the next state, well, that is S1 times C, and I can now write that the S1 is S0 times C. So I'm getting that S2 is actually the same as S0 times C squared. Or in more generality, if I look at the S sub J, then that is S sub zero, the initial state, times C to the power J. That's actually kind of interesting because if you look at these matrices, well, these can be pretty big if you have length n shift registers, but each of those entries can only be zero or one, at least if we're over F2. So they're only two to the n squared of these matrices. So that means eventually we're going to find two that are the same. At the latest, after two to the n squared, we're going to run into a repetition. Now that means that also the, um, the states at that point, so well, as i is as zero times c to the i, and if now c to the i is the same as c to the j, then well, no matter what the s0 was, what the starting state is, we're getting actually that s i is the same as j. So we're getting that our states are periodic. Now we had seen this already for FSRs, and now we're also seeing it for LFSRs, so this is not such a surprise, but it's still nice to have a short mathematical proof that this is ultimately periodic. Because in the next step, well, if you multiply again by C, you're also getting that C i plus j is the same as, uh, i plus one is the same as C j plus one. So no matter what the starting state is, you're getting a periodic property. Now, if your matrix C is invertible, so that just means you can remove, you can divide out by powers of C. So let's assume that I is larger than J. So then we can divide by C to the J here, which on the uh, right hand side means we're just getting CJ divided by C to the J, which is one. And on the left hand side, we're getting C to the I minus J, well, to the I divided by C to the J. So we're getting C to the I minus J. And that will be that entity matrix. Again, all of these are n by n matrices. So here this i is an n by n identity matrix. And that means we're getting not just an ultimately periodic function, but we're actually getting a periodic function. So then we're getting that s i minus j is the same as s0. And what we know from this lemma from the uh, first lecture, not even just about LFSRs, but about feedback shift registers, we do know if you have something which is periodic, which repeats, then the smallest number where it repeats, so the period, is the divisor of whatever number you see for the repetition. So since here the c's repeat at least after i minus j, we know that the period of the sequence has to divide i minus j. So independent of the starting state, we are seeing this divisibility property. So we can actually get information from looking at the c's on what periods we can expect. So let's go back to our examples. Um, oh yeah, I should also point out if C0 is one, so that was what I was saying anyway, um, the first coefficient we want to be one anyway because else we could shop it by one, then the determinant of C is one and that means that C is invertible. 
So we will always be in the second case here where the function is periodic. So that we really can get back to the first state. So from the pictures, what you can remember, this was the circle and not just the circle with a tailpiece. All right, map definition of order. So the order of this matrix, and in general, if you have any group structure, then was even semi-group structure, then order is defined as the smallest integer so that when you apply this group structure on, well, L copies of this thing itself, then you're getting the neutral element, the identity element in this case. This need not exist, but if it exists, the order is the smallest of those and smallest not larger than zero. And I'm going to write this as ord of C. So you're going to look for these L's of your types. And if we have that the state update matrix has order L, this was the example we've just seen, if you have that C to the I minus J is identity matrix, then the period divides this I minus J. Well, now we have seen here as the proper definition of order. So the order means that C to the order is one. So then if C has order L, then all periods, no matter what the starting state is, have to divide this L. So let's look at the more interesting one where we had these periods of length 4, 2, and 1, 1. This was the one where we grabbing all three coefficients. So this is the, the starting matrix, or this is our state update matrix. And uh, here's the, the circuit diagram again. So let's take a look at what happens when we square this matrix. So again, matrix times matrix multiplication, we're taking the first row, so this 0, 0, 1 here, times the first column, 0, 1, 0, and that means just we're multiplying like a dot product. So that means, well, 0 times 0 plus 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0, so that gives us 0. And if I then fill in the whole matrix, um, that just means we're doing this for every row and column combination, and we're getting those nine entries. Then I want to compute the third power as well. So I'm taking the C squared, put it here, times C. This one is C again copied, and I'm getting a result. Doesn't look like that any new matrix, so I'll continue. And I'm getting that C to the four is again the C to the three here, times C. And uh -huh, this one is actually the identity matrix. So that means for this example, I do observe that the order is four. Now that is fully compatible with what we observed, namely the periods that we found are 4, 2, 1, and 1. So we actually, in this case, do have a starting state which gives us the same period as the order. So we only know from the theory so far that it's a divisor. We're not even guaranteed that we can get as large as this divisor. And, well, all the examples work, but it's a price. Last thing for today is um, what we call the characteristic polynomial, and that will be a nice tool to actually get a more powerful handle on it. Let me go back one slide to explain one downside of this. So if I'm wanting to compute the order of this matrix, then I'm dealing with, um, with objects which have dimensions n by n. So these get pretty large for cryptographic sizes, and it's kind of cumbersome to do all these computations. The character polynomial captures a lot of the properties of the matrix, and as we'll show in the exercises on Thursday, it captures the most important properties very well, and so we will be able to just forget about computations of the order of C and focus on this character polynomial. Now, character polynomial is the normal term from linear algebra, so what the definition is, and I'm going to do it here in the general case, for general fields, not just for F2. So if you're looking only for the F2 case, then you can ignore all the minus signs here. And then the definition is just to take the identity matrix times the variable X plus C, but in more generality, you're taking X times the identity matrix. That means we're getting these blue X's here on the diagonal, and then minus the, vec uh, the, minus the matrix for which we want to compute the characters upon it. So that is definition of characteristic polynomial from linear algebra. What is specific to the analogous R's is the shape of the matrix. Remember that the shape is we have 
for C that the top row is all zeros except for the last column is the coefficients of the update function. And then in the remaining n minus 1 times n minus 1 matrix, we have an identity matrix. So it is shifted down by one row in n minus 1 times n minus 1 matrix. And of course, that's still here. But now additionally, we have taken the negative of this and put x's on the diagonals. When you compute the determinant of a matrix, then you're looking for nice things for which you can develop. So you're looking for something which has like a row which has few entries. Now here pretty much everything has few entries, like every column except for the last one and every row. Well, most of them have three entries except for the very last one here and for the very top one here. Now I want to preserve most of the properties of this matrix and so I will choose to compute the determinant using the development for the top row. So the, the rules are you taking, well, every element in the top row times the determinant of the matrix where you're crossing out the column that corresponds to it and the row that corresponds to it. So what I have here is x times this submatrix and then minus c0 times this submatrix. And I also have to take into account that there is a, what we call the checkerboard rule. So there is a sign change. So this comes in with plus, this comes in with minus, this comes in with plus, this comes in with minus, etc. So at position one, I'm having a plus, position two is a minus. So if I'm getting to position n, then I'm seeing minus one to the n minus one. Okay, so here's what I just explained. I'm having x times the remaining matrix here, and that's definitely with a plus sign. Then I'm having minus one to, well, first of all, it's just, oops, it should be n minus one here. And then there's another minus one from the C zero. So this is actually to the n, not n plus one. Sorry for the typo, I'll fix it on the slides. And then the C0 matrix is the remainder here. So ah, I'm getting rid of all of this long column here. And I'm just left with this matrix, which is very, very sparse. There's almost no entry there. So this matrix here is, is very easy to analyze. So let's look at this matrix here first. As I said, I made a typo up here. So this would be minus one and minus one for the checkerboard rule, minus one from the C0. So that is the coefficient from it. And then I'm supposed to compute the determinant of this thing. Now that's a lot easier. So here I can pick, for instance, the last row to, to, uh, for the development because it has just a single entry and then forget about everything else. I'm getting minus one and this will continue minus one, minus one, minus one. And there are n minus one of those. So the determinant of this thing is just minus one to the n minus one. Now that together with the previous minus one to the n gives me an odd number of minuses. So I have n plus n and then here this is cancelling out, there's a minus one. All right, so this one here is simply minus c0. That's a very complicated way of writing minus c0. Over here, I'm also kind of happy with this because if I squint a little, and I change the indices, then this matrix is the same type as this matrix. But it's gotten one smaller. Instead of having n by n, it's now an n minus one by n minus one matrix. So I can actually see what happens if I apply this recursively. I will always get, so well, the next one would be c minus one, uh, minus c one, then c minus c two. And okay, this one has an x to multiply by. So what we'll see there is, well, we have x times c0 uh, times c1, and then the next one times c2, so I have an x squared here, and eventually I'm just left with this x minus cn minus 1. And if I trace through this, what I'm seeing is that I'm having x, 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 x to the n, that's the only thing that's plus, and then the cn minus 1 times 
x to the n minus 1 comes in with a minus, and then the n minus 2 has x to the n minus 2. So in general, I'm having x to the n minus the coefficients ci x to the i, where this sum runs from 0 till n minus 1. So that is the definition of the characteristic polynomial of this state update matrix. And this polynomial has lots, captures all the features of the feedback shift register as far as they can capture, be captured by just the design rather than the starting state. So this will tell us something about what the period is and also how we could combine them. So more of that, as I said, you will develop some things of this in the, in the exercises. And so that's the end of the lecture for today. Thank you.